Hey guys, welcome back to Baby... No, shoot. <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> Welcome back to Grilling Dave. I am here with Dave Paris. This is a fun thing that we started doing this year where we make Dave... Fun for you anyway. Oh, it's a blast for all of us, Dave. We make him sit in a chair and answer questions because he loves being on camera. He's always a big fan of this. He never ever tries to get out of it or del uses delay tactics. I mean, today he scheduled his lawnmowers no. to come in right as we were about to record. It's awesome. So if you have any questions for Dave, please leave them in the comment section and we will torture him again in the future. This is so much fun, guys. So how are you doing, Dave? I'm good. So the blower guy is done. The lawnmower guy is done. The weed eater so guy now, is doing something, but I don't currently see him. Right. So we the, might the be okay. The weed eater guy. The weed eater guy. Right. The kid that you paid to turn on power equipment so we'd have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> <sighs> Must be fun living in your brain, Justin. Oh, totally. So I've got my camera here, but I'm looking at him on Zoom. So if you see me bouncing back and forth, that's that's what's going on. But we have a fun plan for today. We're going to answer some questions that you guys have asked. The most important one being, should you get the SNS Kamado or the SNS Kettle? We're also going to talk about some new products that we have that you know have just come out this month. And then uh, most importantly, I guess we could start off with the big news, David. Congratulations, his kettle <laughs> won the best new product from Amazing Ribs. What, was it, what exactly is the title of it? I, I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, it's the AmazingRibs.com Best of 2020 Award. So That's they amazing. have different, uh, you know, they have different segments. They've got thermometers, they've got grills, they've got other product categories, and we're best of 2020 within the, the charcoal grill. Uh, product category. Okay. So yeah, I was, I was pretty cool. We're pretty excited by that. I bet. I bet. Was that a total surprise or did they give you any heads up or just an email one day and you're like, holy cow. I got absolutely no heads up whatsoever. It. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where I saw it first. I think I just got an email. I, I got smoke signals because I'm subscribed to it. I opened yeah. it up and it started showing these awards and the kettle was in there. I'm like, whoa. That's pretty cool. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I found out. So of course I clicked through and go look on the website, and it was there. And uh, hmm. that was uh, that. It was really it was really neat to see that. That's so cool, man. I'm so I'm so happy for you. Uh, I mean, I'm not exactly surprised. Uh, it's a great kettle. So good job, good job, good job. Thank I you. said it three times. <laughs> so Dave. Do you want to start off talking about the new products that you guys have come out with, or should we go straight into the tough questions? We have a bunch here today. Okay. I don't know what products you want to talk about, and I don't know what questions you're going to ask. So <laughs> I guess whatever, whatever you're going to hit me with. Uh, All right. Well, let's start with the big one. Let's start with the, I, the I'm main... a rip the Band-Aid off kind of guy, though, so if we can just... Get that All guy right. there. So that that let's do good. that. Let's do that. So the, the big band-aid for this for this video is a question that, that I've been asked ever since I started making videos with the Kamado on my main channel, um, Babyback Maniac. The the Kamado versus the kettle. With the slow and sear being so good in the kettle, why would someone pick the Kamado or why would someone pick the kettle? Like what is the what is the main trade-off, the main benefit? when it comes to Kamado versus kettle cooking? I mean, obviously the kettle's gonna be less expensive or else this wouldn't be a question, but what, what do you have to say? What do you think? Yeah, this is a tough question. I have difficulty articulating just a pros, con kind of, pro, pros, cons kind of list. What I can say yeah. is we were working on several different types of grill to put a slow and sear in that we wanted to bring to market. And the Kamado was one of the, the, the first ones that I had the opportunity to get in my backyard and start testing. So I get my, 
there's the blower dude. What? So I get it in my backyard <laughs> and I start cooking with it. And after a couple of weeks, I had noticed that I wasn't cooking with my kettle anymore and I wasn't missing it. You know, when yeah. I cook with any other grill that I have, I'm always missing something about uh, having the slow and sear and having that two zone super sear environment, super slow, low and slow environment. Um, with the Kamado, I, I just, I didn't have the need to go back to the kettle. So then I started trying to figure out, okay, what is it about this grill that I like so much? Well, it gives you all the benefits of a Kamado. You know, Kamado is a jack of all trades. It does everything pretty well and it excels at uh, roasting and baking. So if you're making bread, you know, if you're roasting chicken wings, if you're pizza, uh, all that kind of stuff, Kamado's just excel at because they've, you know, that ceramic hearth kind of cooking is just a, a natural. What Kamado's can have trouble with is low and slow smoking because they are too efficient. You don't get that really high temperature fire you need to have the good clean smoke. I know I'm gonna get some blowback from Kamado owners out there, bring it. You haven't used our Kamado uh, unless you've, I, rather, unless you've used our Kamado in turbo slow mode, you just don't understand what I'm talking about. The, the and other that's a big, hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you off. That's a big distinction because I have used a lot of other Kamados and I think most of them nowadays are absolutely great and I didn't necessarily think there was gonna be any difference either because I've used so many different brands. And no, actually you, you, you told me I was full of it, I think. You didn't I say that in so it. many words. <laughs> I could just tell by your, you're like, oh, that's nice, Dave, you have a Kamado. I, good for you, you made another ca Kamado. Yeah, but, you exactly. know, truthfully, <laughs> but uh, to be honest, I mean, I mean, I guess I do kind of have to eat those words because um, there is a difference in the turbo slow mode. Like that's the difference. Like you, you, I, and I, I cooked on it five times because I didn't believe what I was seeing and tasting. Um, and I thought mm -hmm. it was just kind of dumb luck, you know? So I actually cooked five different times before I ever said anything about it. And there's definitely a difference. And I'm talking like, like, I so didn't believe it, even after experiencing it, that I did tests with just meat with absolutely no seasoning, just to make sure I didn't have any confounding factors or anything like that. Um, and then I was like, okay, he's right. He did something here. I don't know how you did it. You yeah. know? I, um, I remember you sending me a picture of some ribs and, and they look good. And I was like, uh, did those turn out like you expected? And you just said no. And then went yeah. off the radar for a while. And I'm like, I need to know where they, is that, <laughs> is that good or bad? I, so, yeah. and of course, it sounds like they were good. They were, but it's it, the smoke flavor you get, the ring you get is more reminiscent of an offset smoker than it, with, you know, anything I've I used agree. that's not an offset smoker. So, I totally agree. And, and then to cap it all off, when you're searing, because of the way the slow sear works, it gets the charcoal very close to the meat. Most Kamados, have the fire, you know, the charcoal is always in the bottom and the meat is always either way above it or you're having to like reach way down in there to get to where the fire is if you're going caveman style or if you have a grate that sits lower in the Kamado. With, with our Kamado, you, you can you extremely intense searing, probably even better than the kettle because you've got the heat from the ceramics and the airflow just all really working together to give you a lot of heat at the grate level. Plus the grate is right there, it's accessible, it's easy to get to, and you can spin the grate and you have the cold grate technique, plus it's 22 inches of cooking surface compared to 18, which is in the, the most common Kamado size. Yeah, but, I mean the kettle, the kettle is nice too though. I mean, and it does, I think it heats up faster. So if you just have a quick cook, you know, you can get in and get out pretty fast and um, of course, you have all those bells and whistles on the SNS Camaro. Uh, SNS Camaro, is that like an SNS Camaro? Camaro. Maybe that. Yeah, maybe I, I agree. Time. There, you know, I'm not saying that. If I think if budget, if it's in your budget, I would go with a Camaro. If it's 
if the Kamado is a stretch, I would get the kettle. You're going to be happy with it. And yeah. even though the, the, the Kamado probably or does excel at roasting and baking over the kettle, um, the kettle has, it's lighter, it's easier to move around your deck, get in and out if, if that's a, a factor. And it does heat up quicker. So on days that you're making, you want a, a really quick short cook, um, especially in the beginning when you're still trying to learn what uh, thermal soaking is with regards to ceramics and a Kamado, um, the, the kettle is a great cooker too. So it's a great cooker regardless. It does a couple of things better than the Kamado, but if your budget allows it, I think you get a more complete package with the Kamado. Yeah, I totally agree. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, was that the worst question? That, that was so the bad. that was the question that was asked last time, and I fully intended to ask you. Actually, I think I started the question, and then we got off track, and multiple people were like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I needed okay. that answer, so I told them we would hit. This was a this was a question from um, Carl Jung. I'm sure I'm saying his last name right, but he definitely was like, "Yeah, you're killing me," you know. Um, well, Carl, see, I, I have another we one. did a better job this time. Yeah. <laughs> my, my bad. We, we chase yeah, rabbits sometimes. Yeah, it was sometimes. all Justin's fault. Definitely Justin's uh -huh. fault. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, this one is from Jason Williams. Hey, guys, I was thinking of purchasing a new grill. I was leaning towards the SNS Kamado, but some of the accessories that will be coming out soon with the SNS Kettles has me debating which should be the best. I have an 18-inch kettle. I mainly do short cooks, but uh, smoke ribs two or three times a year. What would what would like to smoke more often, but just don't have the time these days? Hopefully, this will change in the future. Any advice on which to purchase? Greatly appreciated. Did we, did we just cover that? I think we did just cover it. If you know, if budget allows, could, go with the Kamado. If you're, uh, if you if you want to be more mobile and move the grill in and out of the garage, so I'm, I'm not quite sure if he's got a deck or or, or what have you, or if he's going to cook. On his garage, you know, his driveway. Um, that's, that's a, good a point. factor. So, it, it, you know, for mobility, the kettle wins. For overall, all around, great, you know, just great at everything. The Kamado. If you prioritize being able to get up and cooking as quickly as possible, I would go kettle. Um, can't re can't go wrong with either one. And yeah. there's a good chance you're going to get both. So just pick the one, you know, pick your favorite for now and get the other one later. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Mark Quigg asks, what are the future plans for the Kamado? And are there any model variations likely or will there be any new accessories coming? So first off, I'd like to thank Mark a ton for all the photos that he's been uh, putting out in our Facebook group. He is uh, from the UK and he's been using um, the, the our, our new plancha and just making all kinds of phenomenal uh, meals using it. So thank you so much for, for sharing all that uh, in our Facebook group, which everyone needs to check out if you haven't checked it out. Um, as far as new stuff for the Kamado, I can't think of anything right now that we're working on immediately. We just put in an order for another production run. There are no changes to that one. So we're, we pretty much think we kind of hit it out of the park with what we've got and we're just kind of maintaining that. Um, did I hit, what, was there any other part of that question? Something about accessories? No, I think, I think that's, that's most of it. You know, yeah, I mean, one thing the to remember, and the one thing to remember with our Kamado, though, is that because it's 22 inches and works with all of our standard 22-inch sized slow and sear compatible products, it works with a lot of other aftermarket accessories uh, on the market that you may not have even thought about using in a Kamado. For example, Justin, you've used your uh, your Gabby's grill in, uh, yeah. in your Kamado. <laughs> That's... Uh, yeah. For Santa Maria style stuff, which we you can already do Santa Maria cooking with the grates that come out of the box with our Kamado, but you know having a, that um, that accessory just 
further improves that experience. But yeah, there, so there's, there's already a ton of stuff out there that you can use with, uh, with our Kamada. Yeah, I mean, there's there's cooking grates that were designed for the Weber kettle that fit. There's the rotisserie on SNS's website that works. There's um, there's just so many. There's so many. It's such a standard size that that there there's a lot of stuff. In addition to the thermometers and and things. I mean, those are those are important accessories. I think that should be the first thing someone buys for any grill is a good yep. thermometer. Which I guess that's a good time to bring up. We have a you came out with a new thermometer. I've got a, I've got it right here, but I'll cut in some pictures. The, the SNS. Yeah. Wait, you can't see which one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. The SNS 101. Um, SNS 100. Did I, what did I call it? 101. You are really close. You, bless your heart. You, you, tr you, you were doing your best. I'm overachiever, Dave. Goodness. <laughs> um, so this kind of reminds me of, uh, a similar thermometer in this, I don't know if I should, anyways, this is a very nice thermometer for the price. Um, it's got yeah, a lot of, for sure. a lot of features, uh, a digital display, uh, backlit. When you spin it around, the numbers auto rotate, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you actually have one not auto rotate <laughs> stuff and like that. Is there anything it. else? Any other thoughts on this? Uh, you know, it opens when you fold it, uh, uh or it, uh, opens. It Turns opens when you, fold it. when you fold it open. <laughs> you it, you can calibrate it uh, to you to your what you said. The the numbers will flip uh, up with it regardless of which way you use it. So you can use it right handed or left handed. Uh, it's yep. super fast at two to three seconds reading. It's super accurate. Uh, I think it's 0.9 degrees accuracy. The we we went very so. The you know the overall thermometer that you look at it is it has a lot of features, but what you can't see is that we spent extra money on the probe itself, and that probe tip has more accuracy and reads a temperature more quickly than anything on the market at its price. It's just it's a great thermometer regardless of price, and it's at a great price. So there's. It, we're extremely proud of this and we're very happy to bring it to the market to, you know, to your point, Justin, we think an instant read thermometer is one of the most important products you can have in your barbecue arsenal. It's, you, it's, you don't really understand how important it is until you have it and you start to realize knowing the temperature your meat is at helps you so much in in really nailing that final result you know getting medium medium exactly medium rare instead of medium or rare um yeah getting a pork butt that is tender and not dried out you know versus not tender or overcooked um just knowing your temperatures helps with with everything you cook yeah, absolutely and i mean i've you know, I've given away a lot of thermometers um, in the past as gifts, and they caught. Yep. Can we? Do you want to name the price, or you just want to let people check the website? I mean, do we know the price? Uh, you know, check the website. It should say thirty dollars. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I mean, for thirty <laughs> bucks, this is this is a, like the old. That's a perfect gift price. You know, um, I've given. Yeah, I've had really a lot of friends is. that have have gotten into cooking, and I've given them the much much more expensive version that kind of looks like this and that yeah. stings a little bit, especially when you're talking about a beginner, you know? And yeah. so, and it's these... a good thing you, you know, it's a good thing you said cooking there and not just outdoor barbecue because instant yeah. thermometers are good anywhere. You know, if you're cooking yeah. a casserole inside, if you're sauteing inside, it, they're just as good inside as they are outside. Yeah. My wife uses ours as much as I do. Um, you know, yeah. she, she, she's an indoor cook. She bakes, um, late, lately she's been making, uh, yogurt and like, I mean, there's a million uses for these things that are very helpful. So this is, I'm excited about this one. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, another question about the Kamado. Actually, this is from Joe La Lazar. I'm probably, again, mm -hmm. sorry about the last name. Um, but it, it looks like it's kind of the same question as before. What is the top, what is the top of the accessory list for the SNSK? I guess that's a different question. 
Um, and I'm assuming he's talking about the SNS Kamado. What is it? What yeah. what what accessories would you recommend for someone who is getting the slow and sear Kamado? Let's just assume that was his question because that's a little bit different than what's coming. Okay, if you're going to accessorize, I would definitely just go ahead and get the Deluxe Kamado because that one comes with the drip and griddle pan, the elevated cooking grate, and the slow and sear Deluxe, and all those give you extra flexibility. Uh, over the standard Sloan Sear Kamado that comes with the original Sloan Sear and doesn't have those other two accessories. After that, I would take a, assuming you have an instant heat thermometer, make sure you're, you get that. Um, then our kick ash basket, our divider, and our kick ash can are all very useful. And uh, I'd recommend those, the rotisserie. Um, that Justin mentioned is we're out of stock on those, but we should have them pretty soon. Um, it's, you know, just adds another way of cooking to your arsenal and it, it doesn't just do rotisserie. It's also got a five set uh, shish kebab set so you can uh, skewer food um, as well. So I think, uh, and really, I mean, any accessory out there on the market that works with a 22 inch style cooker, there's a very good chance it'll work in our Kamado so you can consider those. But even just the slow and sear Kamado or the slow and sear deluxe Kamado out of the box gives you so much flexibility that, you know, as long as you have a good digital thermometer to, to go with it, uh, I think you're pretty much set up. You don't absolutely have to have any of the, those other accessories. Yeah, I also think, and I guess this is another new product that we haven't talked about here yet, but um, the plancha like is mm -hmm. an awesome addition to the Kamado. It really kind of rounds out your cooking because you can do some of that flat top cooking. You know, you mm -hmm. can make a smash burger. That's kind of a game changer product. That would be creeping up to the top of my list of recommended accessories along with the other stuff. No, that I, yeah, I agree. And that actually does something that you that can't really do out of the box. So that, that's a good one as well. I just wasn't thinking about that one. Um, yeah, Too many the, the plancha is just a really, <laughs> Until you've used it and, you know, you realize how thick and heavy that thing is, you know, it's 22 pounds and having a flat surface to, to cook on and you, it, it, it is definitely not your standard grilling experience and it's much Absolutely more not. than just being a short order cook. There, there's, it, it, there's something about it. It's pretty special and uh, I, yeah. I use mine often. Yeah, we jokingly call it the... the Captain America shield. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's made out of vibranium. No, it's a, it's a beast. I mean, it is very, very heavy duty. I, I mean, 23 pounds is a lot easier to say than it is to lift. When you start picking yeah. that thing up, you realize this is a solid piece of metal. Um, yeah, and, and if you're comparing it, us to other products on the market, just look at the weight and you're gonna see that yeah. ours is made of much more material. And the the shape of the the holes, the cutouts that that, they're there to let for airflow, and they're also there to pick the plancha up when it's cold. People don't pick it up when it's hot. It, you will burn yourself because it has so much, stores so much heat in it. But the, those holes have a flat side, which makes it much easier to clean off the gunk from your, uh, your spatula or your scraper or whatever. So uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot about the plancha to like. Totally. It's, just, it's a very... It's a very refined product for, for what mm -hmm. it is, you know. Um, somebody put a lot of time into that, so it's cool. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, no, I so we talked to, we kind of organically integrated the new products in there, though. The new thermometer, the new plancha. Was there anything, was there any other new product we were going to talk about before we go on with some of these questions? Is that, is that all we're in a position to talk about right now? I believe so. I can't think of anything that we've recently introduced. So the scraper, uh, the wood scraper. Oh yeah, we've got the we've got the scraper. So for people that uh, don't like to use the the bristles, and I, I totally get it because br the the bristle brushes can be dangerous, but you still want to uh, clean your grates off while they're hot. These wood scrapers, you know, you you scrape it along the hot grate and, and uh, it gets little burnt indentions that perfectly marry up to uh, your particular grate. And uh, it's, re it's uh, a really good option for cleaning those grates off at the end of a cook. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I told you this. I didn't, I didn't think much of the whole, the whole, I mean, 
how do I say this? Worrying about barbecue tines falling in your food and getting you sick is not was not at my, the top of my list of concerns with barbecuing yeah. until it happened to my neighbor. And two doors right. down, it happened to my neighbor. And sure enough, she was in the hospital. She got an infection. They had to go in and do surgery to pull out a barbecue tine. And I was like, this is like, this is legit. I mean, this is a thing, you know? And um, yeah. I mean, we could have lost her. We could have lost her, you know? And fortunately, she's fine now. But uh, so I like that. I'm glad that I'm glad that you know there are more products like that out there. So yeah, I mean, I, I do still use some bristle brushes on occasion, but I'm very cognizant that that is a risk factor, and I look at my grate and I make sure there's nothing on it. And um, yeah. you're especially at risk if you leave your grates dirty and you're cleaning a cold or a warming up grate with with the brush like if you if it's it, that's just a recipe for disaster because you know a gunked up uh, grate that gunk will hold on to the bristle you won't see it and uh, it'll melt into the food and you'll just eat it and then you yeah. end up in the hospital it's another reason totally. to keep your grates clean absolutely yeah i change my grates i mean i change my scrape my grill brushes on a schedule too like i just i don't wait till it looks funny i i change them every try to change them every three months um just whether they need them hey rocky how are you doing buddy he just <laughs> popped in behind you <laughs> yeah yeah he's not showing up on camera he's just showing up on your zoom oh is he you, oh, you okay. can let's see this is as as far down as the camera actually sees so but hold oh, okay. on okay okay I know everybody wants the Rocky cameo, so we'll get it. Hey, hi, buddy. Yeah. Rocky, so there sweet. Yeah. All he wants to do is kiss you, man. Like every uh, time you pull oh, him up, okay. he's like, I'm going to kiss you in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's not just me. He's an equal opportunity. Affection yes, giver. Yeah, I've not found a person I won't love. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. All right, good job, buddy. You did good. Okay. Good cameo. We'll, we'll send you a check later. <laughs> All right, so these next, these next few questions, I kind of grouped them by topic, and the next batch is business questions. A lot of people have business questions, and they want to kind of know some, you know, behind the scenes of owning a grill company. Are you, are you cool answering those? I am. Let's hear them. All right, here we go. This one is from Zach, and he wants to know, I've been following and using Dave's products since the original SNS was available. This is just to satisfy my own curiosity, but I'd love to hear more about the company in general, the history, successes, operations, um, the manufacturing process, the uh, PD process, lessons learned, and what's the five-year plan. So basically, Holy just moly. To hear your thoughts. That's like that's a lot. That's a whole interview by itself. Maybe we try to just hit one of those. Uh, how about I mean, this? We'll 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 come back to that. Um, these other questions are a little bit more specific and then we'll, okay. we'll, we'll circle back to his question. How about this from Tim okay. Phillips? He says, what, what has been the biggest Tim Phillips says, what has been the biggest challenge starting and running your business? That's a good question. Whew. You know, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? What you're gonna say? No, you got to tell Just me. Just there's only so there's only so many hours in the day and you have massive ADD, so you can't focus on anything very long. No, <laughs> okay, no actually that's not what I was going to say. Nice, nice guess though. And this dog won't leave me alone, by the way. He's still, he's still here. So Rocky, go he's, on. He, go that's because he's awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. So definitely <sighs> taking the leap is hard. There is an inherent risk. I was lucky in that I never, you know, had to go max in debt with this company. We were very profitable very early and things have just grown and grown and grown. So we're, we've been very fortunate with, with that. Um, but you do have to accept that there is a risk. You may not succeed and you need to have a plan to, to back out of it without, you know, uh, completely ruining your finances if, if things don't work. Um, there is no, there are so many things that a company has to do that is administration in nature or compliance in nature and 
there is kind of like when you have a baby, it doesn't really come with the book. I mean, there's a lot of books out there, but <laughs> how do you even know which one to, to read? And what if so there's so much advice and it's so contradictory and your you know, states and cities all have different regulations and whatever you're getting into has its own unique uh, risk factors like live fire. You know, trying yeah. to get general liability insurance when you sell a product that has fire in it can is different than um, some other things that may not have more inherent risk. So just having to do all that stuff, you know, having to rely on yourself to take care of everything, being the jack of all trades, that's difficult. You've got to have confidence in yourself and in your product, because um, if you if you don't believe in it, it's really hard to get other people to believe in it. Eh, the, it's it's a lot of work for for sure. Um, try not to quit your day job. Your your day job uh, gives you a lot of stability that you don't even realize until you don't have it anymore. Um, how long? How long did you? I'm, I'm going to cut you off. I'm sorry. How yeah. long did you stay? I think because I think people you hit on something there that a lot of budding entrepreneurs are going to are going to want to know the answer to. How long did you stay with your day job before you pushed off the shore and went full time adrenaline? I think it was about three years. Three years. And at one point, so I that's had three a really jobs. that's a really that's a really long time, like being patient, waiting for and kind of. You know, just I mean, I know I know so many I know of several companies that started, they got too far extended in debt, and they ended up having to sell their IP or their product or their name, just yeah. because they couldn't pay bills that month. You know, so how did you yeah. know when, when it was the right time to just okay, we're this, this it's time. We were at a point where. I was able to pay myself a salary that was as much as what I was making with my day job. And okay. it, it, and it, and that doesn't always happen, uh, especially, and it doesn't always happen after three years. So three years isn't the magic number. It could be five. Um, I still know some people that have their day jobs and do. Some businesses, because they make extra money, and it's, it's just what they love, which is another thing. If yeah. you love what you're doing, it's a lot easier to do it. So don't go into something yeah. that you hate doing. Um, totally. But, and, I, and I think yeah. I think it's really easy to skip back, skip over what you just said. You know, not only did you wait three years, but you were working three jobs. Like, you didn't, this didn't, you worked really, really, really hard on this. You know, like, this didn't just yeah. fall into your lap. You weren't lucky. You know, you were, I mean, it's hard to work. It's hard to work two jobs, <laughs> you know, yeah. even, I mean, I know the third, third, third was, you know, kind of a part-time gig, but you were spending as much time on that as some of the other things you were doing. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It, you know, I had a day job that required travel uh, and I had the, I was running the pitmaster club for amazingribs.com. That was the second job. And then I was running um, SNS grills and that was the third job. So I can remember traveling for the day job, going back to my, my hotel room, spending hours working on you know, putting out fires with the Pitmaster Club or whatever we had to do, because that was early days with the club and we were still figuring some things out. And uh, sometimes stuff happened that you had to address pretty urgently. Uh, and as well as trying to do everything I mentioned uh, with regards to starting a company, and hmm. you got to be willing to do all that stuff. You know, if uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a nine to five job, having some stability, and going home at the end of the day and unplugging, and if uh, it's, and I think that is probably the right answer for for most people. But if you do want to be an entrepreneur and you have the confidence, you have the idea, you have the, the business plan, I would absolutely encourage you to go for it because if you, if you become a success, it's just a whole lot of fun. It's a lot, it's a lot of work, but when you're having fun doing it, it's, it's fun to work, so. Yeah. Work and play so kind of start to blend together. 
So did you did you always know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur, or was this something that was kind of inspired when you invented the slow and sear? This is a question from Justin, by the way. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Justin Warevi? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I did not consciously know. I, I do realize, looking back on my life, you know, I... I I was 45 years old before I really figured out what I wanted to do when I grew up, and that's run a barbecue company. Prior to that, I had always wanted to be in a leadership role, and I was never happy with how long it took to, to get there. And reflecting back on that, I, I know now that that was the entrepreneurial me just not happy with, uh, with what I was doing. Um, yeah. So it, but it, it wasn't really until I found myself in the middle of it that I realized, wow, I really do like this. And if for whatever reason SNS Grills uh, wasn't my day job anymore, you know, if we sold the company or heaven forbid uh, it would go out of business, which I think we're in a good position. I don't think that's going to happen. But um, you know, if I found myself in a place where I had to start over, I would look to start another business because I'm, I like it, I enjoy it, and it's, it's, it's what I'm going to do from now on. Yeah, and I'll say this as someone who's, who's worked for you for a while, like you're very good at, at, at delegating, like you, you bring in people and then let them do their jobs, which is, why are you yeah. laughing? It helps because it, it helps because I don't want to do anything. <laughs> makes it, yeah, that, makes it that part's not lost. <laughs> <laughs> that part's not lost on me. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's uh, good. I mean, that's the way it should be. You know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad ahead. to hear you say that, and I, I appreciate that. I, I really do. I do like. Um, bringing people together as a, in a cohesive team, finding the things that they're good at and leveraging it for everyone's success. I, I like working, everybody working in harmony and doing stuff that they, they like to do. I like them growing. And yeah. um, I, feel, I feel like we're all doing that. Yeah, and it's a good team. I mean, you put together a good team, you know, and there's good communication and maybe maybe the pandemic helps facilitate that. Maybe it's always been like this, but like everybody knows each other, everybody talks, everybody's kind of aware, so nobody's working in silos. I think that's one of the biggest problems with some companies is, you know, accounting doesn't know what marketing's doing, and marketing doesn't know what do what logistics is doing. And and so having that communication, which I think is your fault is one of is really valuable. I think it's very very helpful. Yeah, especially for a small company. You know, if if you're yeah. a Fortune 100, it's impossible for all those different sure um, segments within the company to understand each other. But for for us as a small company, we we absolutely can. And you know, one of the things that Justin's alluding to is we get together every week and we have what we call the global meeting. And uh, everybody talks, and we all kind of talk about the things that are overall important to what's happening in the next week or, or the next month. And it keeps us all engaged. You know, we get to hear each other's voices because a lot of us work from home right now because um, of the, the pandemic. And it's likely we'll probably continue, some of those people will continue working from home afterwards uh, as well as uh, a lot of people but these meetings and these touch points are, are very very helpful I totally agree I think it's I think it's really cool um, it, it is very helpful okay so let me see I want to go back and I, you kind of answered Joe Joe's question Joe wanted to know how business is going I think it's pretty obvious that you know things are growing yeah, I mean, people, I think we did a lot of things over the past year that have uh, helped us be successful additions to the, the team. We have people that are subject matter experts at what they do as opposed to just having a couple of people run around trying to do everything a couple of years ago. We've mm -hmm. rebranded so that we can be more consistent across all of our products and we make more sense when the customer first sees us. And, uh, you know, we start showing up in search and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And 
Um, so we've done those just things, for, but the... No, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say for people that are new here, if this is, happens to be your first, your first video or your first experience, this used to be called Adrenaline Barbecue Company, which has been rebranded s and &S Grills, and that's, that's what you're talking about here. So if there's some confusion yep. or somebody had thought maybe those are two different companies, that's, you know, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page with that. And, and with the rebranding, we're now on a different e-commerce platform. We have a different, you know, backbone software that's driving everything. We have different processes in the warehouse and, and when we do fulfillment. And, and one thing that's special about us is no matter where you buy our product, if you buy it on Amazon, if you buy it from our website, if you buy it at walmart.com or etsy.com, we ship it from our warehouse. And, you know, we're Amazon Prime certified um, t to do that, which anyone that's familiar with uh, business shipping and logistics, it's for us to have to to be able to do that across all those platforms is pretty pretty special. Uh, yeah. And I forgot what we were, what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> How business is going? But I said I was going to go back to Zach's um, eat question, and I'll just reread it, and you can just say anything that if this spurs you, and if you know with any idea or something you want to share, um, go ahead. Okay. And if not, we'll just move on to the next one. Um, okay. So again, Z Zach said he's been following you forever and he wants to know more about the company. He said anything about the history, successes, operations, management process, um, PD process, which uh, lessons learned and what's the five-year plan. Is any of that, does any of that give you any thoughts you want to share? beyond what you've already said, which is a lot. I, I have a feeling people are going to really, there's going to be a certain group of people that's really going to enjoy this part of the of, of this video, so. Yeah, that's a lot of questions. I think, you know, maybe if it really would, and we've hit a lot of them, uh, at least a, yeah. a little bit. Um, that It's a long answer to all of that. One of my lessons learned, though, is Adrenaline Barbecue Company is too many syllables to be a product, <laughs> to be a company name. <laughs> You know, it's a mouthful. And yeah. I so <laughs> when we had the opportunity to, and, and our logo was really complicated. So now it's, let's see if I can, you know, now you can get it on a shirt and, it's, and using two <laughs> colors instead of like 500 that we had in the old one. Um, yeah. And for people that aren't, that don't really know, like that's the slow and here, like that little triangle. That's yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. a mini Sloan's here, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like a it's like a Kaiser Sosa moment. Once you realize that triangle is the water reservoir, you're like, oh, that's oh. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. it's a side <laughs> shot of the water reservoir if you're still wondering where they're coming from. <laughs> that's that's cool. So last last question on the business section, just if you had any piece of advice for somebody who's thinking about doing something like this, what would it be? If you have a plan, a product, or service, or, or whatever, if you're confident in it, um, if you have the right network to help you succeed, and you're willing to do all the stuff that we've talked about having to do as a, a person that owns a company, absolutely go for it without quitting your day job. If you have to quit your so, day job, make sure that you have a lot of money. Uh, yeah. It Don't go into is, debt. It, yeah, try try not to, to go into to debt. That's good advice. That's good advice. Okay, so the Weber 26, Dave, mm -hmm. or more specifically, a 26-inch kettle is like people want it. I just want to I just want to follow up and just say people want it. Okay, I mean I I can't. Lots of people want it. Even if you just made a table to put a Weber in, there's just a lot of interest in that. And I, I feel like people will get mad if I don't point this out. So Greg asks, are you planning on offering a stainless steel drip and griddle pan to go? This is, okay, this is back to the regular 26. Are you planning on offering a stainless steel drip and griddle pan to go with the s, &S XL? Uh, nope. For the Weber 26. Because it doesn't 26? fit in a dishwasher. No, won't fit right. in a dishwasher. We're not doing it. Um, okay. We are planning on bringing our slow and our easy spin grate back for the 26 inch kettle. 
Oh. I'm not sure how close we are to that, but the great is coming back. Okay, that's good to know. Um, more questions about the DNG. Uh, to do. Aaron Barbie was, right, this was the question I actually thought I was gonna read when I did that big lead up. Would die for a larger 26 and a performer style cart, game changer. Then Greg says, definitely this, I, but I know it would not be cheap. Okay, and then Fernando uh, says, how about a kit to convert an existing Weber 26 to a performer? Not everybody is handy enough to make them one that will look good. So a lot of, I mean, and there was like, I think 25 people that asked about the, a, a bigger 26 inch SNS grill. So I just throwing that out there just to, just yeah, to I, see you squirm. I struggle with this one. I, I too love the 26 inch kettle grill and understand for those enthusiasts that have them why they they love them um mm -hmm. i you know the scuttlebutt that i've heard is that uh weber is getting out of the market and mm -hmm. if that's happening it just kind of tells you that there's not enough demand there for that product to be feasible um yeah. that said we don't have we don't have to sell at the volume they have to sell at so it's, it's still something that I do think about. And, you know, as we continue to have products for a 26 inch sized kettle, it becomes, um, it makes more sense for us to offer that size grill ourselves. It would probably be very similar to what we have now, just bigger. Um, it would likely be built into a table instead of being on four legs, but uh, not positive about that. I don't want to do a retro kit for the existing Weber 26 inch kettle because that's not our wheelhouse. That's not what we do. If we were going to go to the trouble of, of making, or when we go to the trouble of making a table, it'll be for our own grill. That makes sense. And I, I just, I, you know, we will probably not bring this topic up again next time. So if you have questions about some of the other things, um, until we have something, until we have something we're saying, you know, um, yeah. but if you guys do have questions about other things, feel free to leave them in the comments. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to do this from time to time because I think, uh, I think this is fun. Um, yeah. So I mean, Amanda asked if <laughs> this is her question. Now she's serious about this. All right. If I'm standing on the right side of the kettle <laughs> while holding an S and S in one hand, and tongs in the other, on a scale of one to R, how many briskets can you cook in it? <laughs> All right, I've, Dan, I've got some Dan. pronoun confusion. Are we talking about the kettle or the slow and sear or the tongs? I don't think you can even get one brisket on tongs. That would be hard. I, um, yeah, I did the math and I think the answer is purple. So, um, or possibly pony. Maybe so. mauve. Moth, yes. Moth's a yeah. great color. It sounds like an old lady's name. Okay, we'll do that. Ma not Maud, Moth. <laughs> We're, that's it. That's kind of the end of the, that's the end of the, of the list of questions we have. I think we covered everything. Um, you have any other parting thoughts? That wasn't so bad. I think I said that no, last really time. Wasn't. You keep, yeah. you know, making me think that you're going to give me such a rough time and that wasn't so bad. And, Not so bad. I mean, I, it's just, it's just fun. I, I really think it's fun to sit here and talk with you about, about business and grilling and, you know, some of the cool stuff that's going on. I don't know. I don't know if, you know, this is going to be one of those videos that, that people, this series is something that people glom onto. I have a feeling that based on last time, there was a, a small, but very engaged audience that really liked this. So I thought this would be fun to do again, if you're up for it. So, you know, I have to work myself up into doing them. Cause I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not a huge fan of being on video, but when, when we're doing it, I do have fun too. So thank you yeah, for you, making me do it. <laughs> thank you for not scheduling more lawn people to stall and uh, not forget, forgetting to charge your batteries. Dude, I did not do that. And... <laughs> this was good. Folks, if you have any questions for Dave, 
um, and you would like us to do this again, just leave those questions in the comments below. And I, I do go back and collect them. I also will occasionally post a request for questions in the Slow and Sear Facebook group. What is that called now? You changed the name. I, um, I'd always, mine opens up to it, so I forget. Slow and Sear Grilling, Baking, uh. and... Slow and sear what? SNS Grills, smoking, grilling, and barbecue, or something like that. Just look up SNS Grills on Facebook. Our our page and our group shows up. It's a great group. It's a very thriving group. And um, usually before we do this, I'll put a post requesting questions there too. So um, that's two ways you can get questions. To yeah, us in the series. it's probably yeah, it's yeah, it's a definitely a good way to get your question on, and it, probably even better than the YouTube video because. Like Justin was saying, you'll have one person ask a question and 25 other people start uh, emphasizing that one and it lets you yeah. know that's important. So it, it's a good place to, a good to get information and get your voice heard. Plus you spend quite a bit of time on there. So it's a good I chance do. to People tag me all the time. Yeah, that's cool. So thanks Dave. Appreciate you being here right. on your own channel. Thank you. Thanks for being on your channel. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, please subscribe. We're so glad you were here with us, and we'll, we'll catch you next time.